Thank you. Check, check. Sweet. Okay. Um, I think I'm good to go. See my water. All right. Hello. Thank you all for coming. This is an introduction to customizing your Angular build with Bazel. I am Greg McGolan, and I work on the Angular team, and I've been working on the Angular Build Tools Convergence project, known as ABC, for about six months. So if you've never heard of Bazel, Bazel is the build system developed by Google that is used to build the entire Google repository. And what I work on is getting Angular and Bazel to work well together so that users outside of Google using Angular can build their Angular apps in the same way that Angular, or in the same way that Google does internally. So today I will be going over the benefits of using Bazel. In other words, what's so great about Bazel compared to the other build systems that you might use with Angular today. And I will introduce the building blocks of Bazel called Bazel Rules. And I will show you how to compose rules together to customize an Angular build tool chain. So why is this talk called How I Love Being Ejected? Well, this is in reference to the Angular CLI ng eject command, which you may be familiar with. And as you see here, uh, the command ejects the webpack config file from an Angular CLI project to give you full control over the build configuration. Now, why would you eject? Well, this would usually be because you want to customize your build beyond what the CLI allows. However, there's a trade-off, which means that you have to maintain the build configuration that the CLI previously handled for you. And this is what the build configuration looks like when you eject it from a newly created CLI project. So needless to say, this can be a bit daunting to maintain if you're not an expert uh, in the build tool in question. So what makes up a build configuration like the webpack config that you just saw? Well, first, you need to tell your configuration what the structure of your application is, meaning the input files are where they're located. Uh, the configuration only also needs to know what the paths are for the output files, and it needs to know what plugins for the languages that you're using and the tools that you're using. And the plugins themselves need some configuration. You also need to have separate configuration for your develop and production builds. And you also need configuration for things like the dev server, running your tests, bundling your application, and deployment, et cetera. And all of this can add up to a lot of configuration to maintain. That is usually just kept in a few central places, like the Webpack config file, the TypeScript config file, and the Karma config files, for example. And when config files are central like this, they can sometimes get to be large and complicated, and they can also cause a lot of merge conflicts for your team. So in an ideal world, we would be able to customize an Angular build with far less configuration to worry about. Uh, it would be great if the configuration was decentralized, meaning there's no large central configuration files that cause merge conflicts. We'd be able to stay on the supported path for the build tool that you're using, even though you want to add customization. And you'd still want to be able to use the CLI to get all those benefits. And as a bonus, it would be great if the build system was also fast and scalable. So how would this be possible? We are currently introducing a way for the CLI to support more than one build tool. Uh, currently, it's using a fixed Webpack configuration. And today, it is possible to build an Angular application and library using Bazel. Uh, this is still an Angular lab, so it's not ready for production. And we are investigating how to integrate Bazel with the CLI so that you can use both at the same time and get the benefits of both. So what are the benefits of using Bazel with Angular? First, Bazel is designed to be fast at scale, so it can scale to large apps and large teams, and it remains fast with incremental builds and distributed builds. And second, Bazel is full stack, so it can be used to build both your front end and your back end, and also supports most languages that are out there. And if you're interested more in the full stack capabilities of Bazel, you can check out the video from Alex and Tor's workshop, which is just earlier today. Finally, Bazel allows you to customize your build with very little configuration, which is what I'm talking about today. Uh, with Bazel, you generally define what to build and not how to build it. 
So Bayesville needs to know about your input files and the structure of, it, of your application, but the how-to configuration is mostly handled by Bazel for you. It's abstracted away. And in Bazel, configuration is local to sources. Uh, you typically have a Bazel configuration file per directory in your source, source folders. So this makes each configuration file smaller and easier to maintain. And uh, it also means that subteams can own their own build configurations and it has fewer merge conflicts. So what makes up a Bazel configuration? Uh, firstly, it's composed of building blocks called rules, and rules perform build steps known as actions. Now, rules can be chained together so the outputs of one rule become the inputs of the other rule, and rules generally abstract away as much complexity as possible uh, of the build steps through a minimal set of attributes. So you don't need to configure the attributes, and you don't need to worry about exactly what the rule is doing on the inside. And finally, rules can also configure each other for you, uh, I'll talk about this in more detail, but what it means is that you get to write less configuration. So what exactly is a rule? Uh, in short, a Bazel rule specifies the relationship between a set of inputs and a set of outputs, including the, the necessary steps known as actions to derive the outputs from the inputs. And different outputs can be generated by different actions. For example, one action may generate some of the output files of a rule, while another action will generate another output file for a rule. An example of a rule like this is the ng module rule. Now, this rule runs the Angular compiler on a set of TypeScript sources, and it is the main rule that you use to compile an Angular application in Bazel. And internally, ng module defines two different actions that run ngc with different TypeScript settings. One of these actions generates ES5 outputs, while the other one generates ES2015 outputs. So a downstream rule may depend only on a subset of these outputs. The TS dev server rule, for example, which runs a dev server and serves a bundle of its input files concatenated, will just use the ES5 outputs of the ng module rule, while the rollup under rule, which generates a production bundle using rollup and Ugify, will use the ES2015 outputs. In this way, downstream rules can configure upstream rules for you, so you don't need to configure what outputs ng module will generate of the possible outputs, and you don't need to worry about which outputs the downstream rules will roll, which outputs the downstream rules will use. As you can see here, the actual code that you would write to configure an ng module rule only contains the set of input files to use. Again, you just describe what to build, and the details of how to build it are abstracted away by ng module. I say mostly because ng module rule does allow you to specify a optional tscompig attribute and pass in a tscompig file. However, only a subset of the options that you'd normally use in tscompig are used. Um, for example, you can specify what libs the compiler should include, but specifying a target in tscompig will have no effect since the ng module rule controls that setting for you. So generally, you'd use one ng module rule per Angular module in your configuration. Um, to configure multiple Angular modules, you'd use multiple ng module rules and chain them together. For example, you may have an app module, which depends on multiple feature modules, and some of those feature modules may depend on a shared module. Um, to chain rules together, you use the depths attribute. For ng module, the list of depths may include other ng module rules, or really just any rule whose output conforms to the inputs that ng module expects. Um, another such rule is the TS library, which compiles a set of TypeScript sources using TSC, and it generates the same ES5 and ES2015 outputs that ng module does. So because the outputs of TS library agree with what ng module expects from its dependencies, these two rules can be chained together. Okay, so I've introduced a few rules. Uh, let's start to put together a basic Angular application using the rules I've mentioned. Here we have a single ng module with a single component that is built with the ng module rule. We use the TS dev server rule to, to run a dev server and the rollup under rule to build a production bundle. What would the Bazel configuration look like for this? In this case, you'd have a single build.bazel file, which is in your source folder and you define the three rules here along with their attributes. 
So each rule that's defined in this build file is addressable by a label, and you can build and run these rules with the Bazel build and Bazel run commands respectively, depending on the rule type. So far, so good. We've configured a basic application that can build and run, and we can build and run it with Bazel. And now let's split this application up into two ng modules. Uh, to do this, we use a second ng module rule and compile the two Angular modules separately. These modules are chained together. In this case, we have an app module that depends on a feature module. The build configuration would now reside in two separate build.bazel files since our sources have been now split into two separate directories. Typically, you do have a bazel build file per source directory. Okay, so now let's see how we configure how we can configure the build to use SAS instead of CSS for our component styles. The ng module rule has an assets attribute which expects HTML and CSS files. Um, however, since input files can be either source files or the generated output files of other rules, we can use the output of the SAS binary rule which runs the SAS compiler uh, and it outputs CSS and we can use that as the input to the assets attribute. In general, any rule that generates a CSS output file can be used as the input to the ng module assets attribute. For example, if someone wrote a rule that compiles less and outputs a CSS file, that rule could also be used with ng module. And the key point here is that the author of the less rule and the ng module rule, they worked independently, but the rules can be used together because they agree on their outputs and inputs. So back to building up our Angular application, we've added SAS styles to our application using the SAS binary rule. And since an Angular application depends on RxJS, we can use the TS library rule, which runs a TypeScript compiler to compile RxJS from, from source in this case. And uh, RxJS actually now ships with Bazel build files in its NPM package for this very reason. And to run a Karma test, we can use the TS web test rule. Here, the TS web test rule depends on both TS library, which compiles the test specification, and the ng module, which contains the component under test. And to actually run a test, you would use the Bazel test command, followed by the label of the test you want to run. Uh, Bazel will build and execute this test, and then report on its exit status. Finally, we need a rule to run an HTTP server to serve up the production bundle uh, so we can ship it to the browser. And for this, we can use the Node.js binary rule, which runs an arbitrary skip using Node.js. And for the prod server, we can run the HTTP server, which we pull down from NPM. But in general, the Node.js binary rule can be used to run any JavaScript file with Node.js using Bazel. So, that covers the basic set of rules that you'd use to build, test, and run an Angular application with Bazel. And this pattern of composing and chaining rules together scales up to very large applications in which there may be hundreds or thousands of rules in use. And now, hopefully I have time for a quick demo. Um, sorry. Okay. So for this demo, I'm running the Angular Bazel application example, which is our canonical example. And what I'm going to do is just add another module to this application, uh, which includes a pipe, which will just transform the word world to ngconf. So if we look at the code, I have, here's the hello world module, and it, it, there's an app module as well. Uh, and I've already had the code for the ngconf pipe here inside the ngconf module. And there's a build up as a file in this folder which configures the build for this module. So you see the source is included here, there's a TS config, and there is uh, a dependency on RSJS because you need RSJS for this Angular module. Make this a bit bigger. Okay. So to actually use this, you do the import and the hello world module to get that pipe. So ngconf module from module. Okay, 
And we need to add it to imports as well. At this point, the pipe should be included in the module, so I could include it in the component. Okay, now let's take a look at the build output. So I think I forgot to save a file I did. Okay. Oh, we got an error. So this is kind of strange. You see that in the hello world module, you can't find the module ngconf module which seems kind of strange because the path is actually correct. This is where the file lives. But what we've forgotten in this case is to include the ngconf module uh, that's built by Bazel as a dependency for the hello world module, which is built by Bazel. And to do that, I would just modify this build file, and I would add it to the depths. ngconf, that's the label name for that uh, rule I just wrote. And we can take a look at the output. Builds good. Uh, it also live reloaded, and we have hello ngconf, just like that. You can add estimations. <laughs> it's good that it worked because I just put that together this morning. Um, all right, so I'll wrap this up. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to talk about before wrapping up is how Bazel does incremental builds. So even for large applications with thousands of source files, a change to your application in Bazel will only result in rebuilding the actions that depend on that change. Um, so the rebuild time in Bazel is proportional to the size of the change and not the size of your application. Uh, for example, if I modified main.ts here and I asked Bazel to run the dev server, Bazel would only generate the ES5 outputs of that ng-module rule. It wouldn't even run both actions, and then it would run the dev server for me. Similarly, if I asked Bazel to then run the prod server, Bazel would then just generate the S2015 outputs of that ng-module rule, rebuild the production bundle, and run the production server. Okay, so to summarize, today I went over the benefits of Bazel, namely Bazel is fast at scale, it's full stack, and it's customizable, very little config. Uh, I talked about the Bazel rules that you'd use to build, test, and run an Angular application. And I talked about how to compose those rules and chain them together to customize an Angular build. And so one can try this out. So Angular Bazel is still in Angular Labs and it's not ready for production. Um, but you can try Bazel today to build an Angular application or an Angular library using the rules I've talked about today. And as of 6.0, Angular itself is also built with Bazel using the same rules. So you can actually look in the Angular repository and see how the build system works there. And this year, our plan for Angular Bazel is to improve the ergonomics, meaning you get better error messages and you get better tooling, potentially generating build files for you because they could be a pain to maintain. Um, we're gonna be working on performance, which means that you get faster builds, and we'll be adding in some features like code splitting. And then as mentioned earlier, in the future, we'd like to converge uh, Angular, Bazel, and CLI together so that you can get the benefits of Bazel when you use the CLI under the hood. So here's some links that you can visit if you want to learn more about this. Uh, the first link is a catch-all for the ABC project. In there, you'll find links to other talks and videos as well as documentation. And the second link is to Bazel itself. Here you can find out how to install Bazel and find documentation for Bazel. And the last two links are for the Angular Bazel example, which I showed you in the demo, where you can see all the rules I've talked about today in use, and you can try them out. So in closing, I'd like to thank Alex Eagle, the lead on the ABC project, who helped me put together this talk. And I'd also like to thank the members of the Angular and Bazel teams at Google, who gave me some good feedback on how to actually fit this all into 20 minutes and make it useful. So thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it, and the slides are available at the link shown here. <laughs>